As we saw before, when we declare an array, uh, in this case of size 4, then that means somewhere in memory there is room made for four integers all in a row, and the value of a is the address of those four integers. Uh, to make that a little more concrete, let's suppose that a is allocated at hex 400. Zero zero. That means uh, the first number in the array 1 is at that address, the second number 3 is at 4004, four, because init takes four bytes, and so on. And we have this correspondence between arrays and pointers, so a used by itself corresponds to the address hex 400, zero zero, just as if we cast that number, that address, uh, straight to an integer pointer. We can use a with array notation, so we can get the second item of the list by second item of the array by using index one. We can also do pointer arithmetic to get to the same value. What that means, you know, a index one actually means add one to the pointer a, uh, and then use star to look at the value of that. One doesn't mean one at the address level; it means the size of one integer, since a is of type int star. So that's why we get uh, the value that's at hex 404 as opposed to hex 401. In other words, a plus 1 is really exactly equal to the integer pointer 404. We could use a with square bracket notation to get what would be a value, but take the address of that to get to the same result. If we take the address 404 and dereferences, we get the value 3 out. We don't usually write something like this, however, because we don't know where a is in a typical program. If we declare a, it's at some address x, and all we know is that 3 is 4 later than that address x. And more generally, if we have a data type t instead of int, then we know that t has some size, and that the second element of the array is going to be at x plus whatever that size is. So again, a by itself in this case is the same as a t pointer um, at that address x, adding 1 doesn't add 4 necessarily, it adds um, whatever the size of t is. We can still use the same things um, using the uh, getting the address of an element of the array, and that's the same as pointer arithmetic, and uh, when we do pointer arithmetic that's the same as getting the ith element out of the array. So more generally this correspondence between pointers and arithmetic and arrays it's okay to add an integer to a pointer. That's what we do to access uh, elements of the array effectively. So in this case, if a is an array, I can add 1 to it, I can add 3 to it to get references to the first, uh, well, to the second and the fourth items of the array. It's okay to subtract an integer from a pointer as well. That corresponds to adding a negative number, of course, but we can think of it as moving backwards in the array. So if p1 is pointing at the fourth element of the array and I subtract 2, add it, two from that, and then p2 will be pointing at the second element of the array. It's also okay to subtract a pointer from a pointer because that's getting the difference between the two pointers, uh, that's the, how many elements apart they are. So if I have this array A and I set p1 to be pointing to the second element, the one at index 1, and p2 points at the one at index 3, then I can subtract p2 minus p1, and that makes sense. It tells me that p2 is 2 later in the array than p1 is or I could subtract p2 minus a, that would tell me that p2 is 3 further in the array than the, the starting point a. It's not okay, however, to add a pointer to a pointer. So in this case, I've got p1 and p2 as before. When we have just p1 or p2, there's no indication where the array starts. So all we have is addresses, and adding them together just points off into some memory twice as far away, which uh, practically never makes sense. So add an integer to a pointer or subtract an integer from a pointer. You can subtract two pointers, but you can't add two pointers.